Heavenly Father, today I ask for grace to bring forth this subject that I'm going to speak about, Lord. You will anoint this message, O God, that people will see what you are trying to tell them, Lord. You will open the eyes, the minds of people who don't quite see, Lord. You will open their hearts to the truth that you are willing to give them eternal salvation through thy precious Son, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that this ministry is able to continue. You will bless this ministry, O oh God, as we try and reach the nations for you, O oh precious Father. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Last week we were talking about wanting to know the truth. Why do people need to know the truth? And what is the truth? Well, we already discussed that the Bible is the truth and whatever is written in there is the truth. And I want to expound a little today on the lake of fire. We know that is the reason why people desperately need to know the truth, where they're going, and what will happen. So we're going to expound first today what the Bible teaches about hell, the lake of fire, and the eternal consequences of rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ. It says in Revelation chapter 14, verse 9, it says, If any man worships the beast and his image and receives his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they had no rest day nor night who worshipped the beast and his image, and who received the mark of his name. And this is what the Bible is teaching about what will happen during the tribulation for those who receive the number 666. The beast, the antichrist, and the false prophet, they will end up in the lake of fire and all those who have followed them. But what about the rest of humanity? Before the great tribulation, what will happen to them? Because the Bible is very clear on this subject. And people have been putting it away and out of their minds so they don't have to think about it. Revelation chapter 20, it talks what will happen to the devil. Revelation chapter 20 verse 10, it says, The devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are, and they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose the face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of these things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead that were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. We know that the Bible teaches that there is a hell and there, that there is a lake of fire. And we know the Bible teaches that the lake of fire and hell was designed and made for the devil and his angels. But what about the people who have been born after Adam? All the peoples of, the, of this planet will be judged. There is a judgment day coming for all of us. In Mark chapter 9, verse 45, it says, If thy foot offends thee, cut it off, for it is better for thee to enter halt into, the li into life than having two feet and to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, 
and that the fire is not quenched. We know here from reading these verses that the Bible teaches that there is a hell and it's going to be throughout eternity. I know there are some false prophets that are on the scene that teach that there is no hell that or there is only a temporary hell and we know that some religion teaches purgatory and that is not found in the Bible. I want to give you a warning those preachers, priests or rabbis or whatever you are if you are war if you are teaching people falsely your degree of punishment will be far greater because the atrocities the atrocities that you are causing is by far greater than what bin laden and hitler did upon the face of the earth we know that those people caused a death that is temporary but you are causing a death that is eternal so i'm warning you preachers or teachers who do not quite know the truth, who don't know the truth. Quit your teaching and find out where you're going and get to know the Lord Jesus Christ for there is a terrible punishment awaiting for those who dare to teach falsely. And the Bible teaches there's going to be a lot of people who will fall because of the deception of the false teachers that are coming upon the face of the earth. I want to warn the individual, you will have no excuse either because you are the keeper of your own soul. You are responsible for your soul. The Bible teaches, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? So you are placed in responsibility. You have given, been given the responsibility of taking care of your soul. That means to seek the face of God and to find out what to do when it comes to this way of salvation. Yes, we know that the Bible teaches about false prophets and false teachers. We know that a lot of people will be led by the blind the, for the Bible teaches that the blind are leading the blind. The Bible all warns about those people, but as far as you yourself, the individual is concerned, you will have no excuse. The Bible teaches that all men are terribly wicked and they have to recognize that they need a savior, that they need a way out of this terrible predicament they're in of what Adam has brought us into. And where do we go to? God has written us a book. He has not left us without hope. And we need to turn to that book which so vividly describes hell. It also very clearly describes the way of escape from that terrible place of judgment. And we need to warn one another for those who know about this terrible judgment. Every individual is responsible for his own soul. That's why the Bible teaches that you have to become born again. And there is going to be no excuse for anybody because the Bible so very clearly teaches we are without excuse and we cannot escape this great judgment that is coming upon the scene. And you will ask me, well, if there is a hell, if there is a heaven, how on earth does somebody get there? Because there are so many voices out there. There are so many religions. Which is the right one? Who has the right answer? I'll tell you who has the right answer. Exactly the book that has written about hell also has written about the way of escape from hell. And that is through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ came down upon on this planet not just to come here and live amongst us to see how we're doing. He came down here to save us because he knew that we're on our way to hell, all of us, because the Bible teaches all of us are lost without, without hope on our way to destruction. So he came down here to pay the penalty for us because we could not do it for ourselves. I know that a lot of religions are out there who are trying 
to appease God with a whole bunch of do's and don'ts. But the Bible teaches our righteousness are as filthy rags. It's not talking about our bad things. It's our righteousness that are as filthy rags before God. When it comes to this great salvation. Because there is nothing on earth we can do to earn heaven. We cannot even earn the air we breathe. Never mind heaven. So what do we do about it and where do we turn to? Like you, we, we taught last week, those who turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, like the woman who had the issue of blood, she grabbed the hold of the mantle of God and she would not let go till the virtue went out from God. And she was healed because she would not let go of the hem of that garment till she felt the power of God come through her body and heal her. In the exact same way, a person who is afraid, a person who is troubled about his life, a person who is not quite sure of himself, can grab a hold of the Bible, can grab a hold of the Word of God, and study and read and find out for yourself where you stand with this great question that has been baffling all humanity. John 8, 32, uh, 31 and 32, it says, If you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And what is that truth? The way of escape from eternal hell, the way into heaven through the precious blood of Jesus, which he shed on the cross for us, to take care of your sin and my sin. Why did he do that? So that he can give us eternal life throughout eternity where we will rejoice with God. But on the other hand, those who reject that Jesus, the Bible teaches in one place that we will look upon them that have rejected that God and we will look through a window type kind of thing and see how they're tormented day and night forever and ever. And you will find that in the Bible. The Lord has a very clear description of though of what will happen for those who follow the devil and his angels, those who reject the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm asking you today, what are you going to do? We know that the Christmas season is around uh, this time of the year. We know that God has given us a great gift of salvation. Are we going to take it? How would your father feel if you would give, if your father would give you a gift and you reject it and, and you don't want it and you throw it aside? Think of what you would do to your earthly father. Never mind what will happen if Jesus, who is your heavenly father, will offer this great gift of salvation to you and you will reject it. I can only say that there is waiting for you a terrible punishment, a terrible time of suffering throughout eternity because you rejected this great salvation. I want to say this, you, you do not have to be separated from God. Already heaven can start here on earth by knowing that you are going to heaven by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ, by turning to him for salvation regardless of what you've been taught. For it's not going to matter what you have been taught. The scriptures will be held up in your face and it will be shown to you. And you will have to acknowledge the fact that you had the scriptures and that you saw it thousands of times but you couldn't care less or you were too... Uh, irresponsible for your own self, you, you, you just threw it aside and this will be held up in your face and you will only have to agree when God will say that you are now forever put away from his presence. What a terrible predicament to be in once the time of your life will be over and you will have to hear God saying to you, depart from me you cursed and go into everlasting punishment. But for those who accept Jesus, for those that turn to him, he, the, the, the sweet voice of Jesus will say, come here you faithful, you 
who belong to my Father and enter the kingdom that has been prepared for you before the foundations of this earth. And I hope this will bring it, bring this incredible serious subject to your attention today because we are slowly but surely heading in that direction when God would see its closing time. The question for this week is asked, what does the Bible mean you have to be born again? Can you expound on it? Because there's so many uh, people out there who are trying to get to God in so many different ways. Well, the Bible teaches in John chapter 3 that a man has to be born again. In verse 3 it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus was baffled by the, uh, the answer that God had given him. But we have to realize that Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden died spiritually when they committed sin against God by eating of the forbidden fruit. And throughout the ages, we are, as people were born in spiritual death. So, But God had said, I will send somebody who will make these things right. And he did. He sent Jesus Christ. And he came and he had to die for us. It's pretty interesting that Jesus had to die so that we can have life. But I want to bring your attention to Acts chapter 10. It's talking about a man, Cornelius. And this man was a devout man, one that feared God with all his house, which he gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. It says this man, Cornelius, he wanted to do right. He gave a lot of money. He prayed to God. He was a devout man. In other words, he was searching for God in his heart. And he tried in the best way that he could do to appease God. And it says in verse 3, He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy alms are come up for a memorial before God. So here is the trick. This man's heart was crying out to God, and God heard. And this is how it will be with every man. If you cry out to God, if you are serious with God and you want to know, God will come to your rescue like he did to Cornelius. But we notice here that crying out to God, giving money and praying and doing all these things weren't good enough. He said to Cornelius, you send for Simon Peter who lives by the sea and he shall come and tell you what you have to do. That's pretty interesting. Nowadays, everybody's trying to become, uh, to enter the kingdom of God by joining a church, getting baptized, or whatever else they're doing. You cannot even think of the ways, but here is what God has for us. So let's pay close attention. Doing good, trying to appease God with right, with our righteousness or whatever we're doing, is not good enough, even though that will determine to God whether we're really serious with Him. It says when Peter came, that Peter opened his mouth and says, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of person, but every nation, he that feareth God and worketh righteousness except, is accepted by Him. So first of all, realize that God is no respecter of person. Every man on the planet is eligible for the kingdom of God. For whosoever wants to know God in his heart will find God. And this is how God is. He doesn't care what color of skin you have. He doesn't care what church you go to. If you in your heart as an individual want to go to heaven, the Lord will reveal himself like he did to Cornelius and he will show you the way of salvation. And what is the way of salvation? It is very easy to see here in this uh, chapter because doing good, doing all the right things wasn't good enough. He told him, go send for Peter and he will show you what you have to do. In verse 38 it says, Now God anointed Jesus of Nazareth 
with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all these things, which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. So he's saying here, we are the witnesses. We saw all this. We know for a fact that what God is showing you here is true because we have been part of this plan. God has chosen us, he says, to be witnesses. And what else did he say? It says in verse 41, and he didn't show us, he showed it to all people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. Very interesting. And he commanded us to preach unto the people to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. And it says here that he commanded us to preach and write. As far as the book is concerned, they were told to write and to preach that God was the judge of everybody and this Jesus was given the authority of being judge and to him give all the prophets witnesses that through his name whosoever believes in him shall receive remissions of sin so doing righteous doing all those things is not good enough you have to see that Jesus is the only one that can forgive you and then when you believe in him, you will receive remission of sin. When you see him as your only way of salvation, as your only way out of hell, as your only way into heaven, and you will see that this is what God has put there before you, you will believe it and take it for yourself, then you will become born again like the Bible says. I hope that answers your question. You just study this uh, chapter and you will realize that whatever God writes, He also gives clear instructions of on how to act. And the Lord richly bless you. Until next time, thank you for asking this question.